Maniac's going to do now. Absolutely. Today is also the 100th anniversary of the sinking of RMS Titanic. And for those of you watching on Justin TV, this is a lump of coal salvaged from the wreck site. It's part of the What Really Happened debris collection, world famous that is, and uh, uh, my wife got that for me as a Christmas present one year. I've been really bad, so I got a lump of coal in my stocking, but it was a lump of coal from the Titanic. Now then, a uh, little bit of personal bragging before we get into the heavy news here. As you probably remember not too long ago, artists and rather architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth held a contest to design a new ad concept for their latest uh, uh, campaign to raise public awareness about the issues surrounding 9-11. And uh, today it was officially announced that uh, the What Really Happened entry did make the top ten. So um, getting a coffee mug and a T-shirt. And there is a cash component to the prize, but I have donated that back to AE 9-11 Truth to help fund this ad campaign. And I'm issuing a public challenge for everybody else who won in the top ten uh, to match me on this. So if you're listening to the show and your entry made it to the top ten, uh, it would be, I think, a really good idea to just simply say, here, take the money, use it to get whatever ad you're going to get out there. Now, the phone lines are open, 800-313-9443, 800-313-9443. Manny's in our control room, twiddling the dials, keeping us out of trouble, ready to answer the phone when you call on in. Obviously, so far, nothing has happened in terms of North Korea firing nuclear attacks at everybody, which is what we were hearing last week. It's going to be a nuclear attack. It's going to be a nuclear attack. Actually, they're testing a missile, which they need to do because they have not had a lot of luck with their missiles. And uh, it is. It's just a test. And the U.S. is just trying to turn this into a big crisis. And everybody's on standby, and the military's on high alert, and they've got an Arleigh Burke just cruising off the mouth of uh, Pearl Harbor here, ready to fire its standard missiles at the evil incoming North Korean nuclear weapon. And, of course, North Korea is not going to start a nuclear war with the United States of America. It's absurd. It's absolutely absurd. This is the United States trying to gin up another reason for another war that can convince the war-weary American public to throw more of their money and their children into yet another part of the world that the United States feels they need to be in charge of here. Now, a United States, U.S., Navy Admiral has come out saying not to worry because the United States can intercept any ballistic missile launched by North Korea. Well, that's true. Why is everybody making a big deal about it? That's your job to do that. We know that's bluff and bluster. We know that the Patriot, which they have deployed over there in South Korea, uh, had an abysmal record of success during Desert Storm. They were proclaiming 90% success. Then it turned out they were hemming and hawing. So that was about 50%. An analysis of the final numbers from Desert Storm showed it's actually between 10 and 15%. So it's another one of these very expensive, bloated U.S. weapon systems that really aren't effective. But this admiral's out there saying, yes, we can intercept any North Korean ballistic missile that is headed for the United States of America. And now they're claiming North Korea has a brand new missile that can reach the mainland U.S., although nobody's seen it and it's never been tested. So the likelihood that it's actually there and deployable, of course, is nil. When we come back from these commercials, I'm going to respond to the admiral and basically dig into exactly what he's saying and why it's not as positive as he suggests. So we're going to take a break for commercials. We will be right back. Okay, admiral Samuel Locklear. He's the commander of the United States Pacific Command. He's a local boy right here on the island of Oahu. And he's out there saying that if North Korea launches a ballistic missile as an intentional attack against the United States, and on that highly fantasized model that could actually reach anywhere, that the United States can successfully intercept it. Okay, let's hold them to that. Let's take them at its word. Because if there is a loud explosion anywhere that's blamed on North Korea, then the entire U.S. ballistic missile defense system turns out to be a complete waste of money. And worse, that would be strike two. Because my parents' generation were forced to pay $5 trillion, and that's back when a trillion was really a lot of money, before all this quantitative easing made trillion, eh, who cares? 
and they paid $5 trillion, my parents' generation, for America's nuclear deterrent. We were all told it was okay for the United States to have all these nuclear bombs and submarines and cruise missiles and Minuteman and Trident and Polaris and all the rest of that as a deterrent to deter nations from attacking us. And everyone out there right now screaming that thus and such a nation is about to attack the United States is in effect admitting that America's nuclear deterrent is not a deterrent and is therefore another complete waste of taxpayer money. So, this is what all of this screaming and yelling really means. If North Korea launches a missile at the United States or its allies, meaning an intentional attack and not just a test that's being exploited for fear-mongering, then the U.S. nuclear deterrent is a failure, demonstrably, and should be scrapped and that money spent on the American people. Put it back into Social Security and Medicare. If there is an intentional attack by North Korea, and it actually hits a valid target, that proves the United States ballistic missile defense system is also a total failure and should be scrapped and that money spent on the American people. Politically, this is a no-win for the U.S. government. If anything happens at all, it's going to be interpreted as a complete and utter failure of all the military spending for the last three generations. Now, North Korea is still out there bluffing and blustering and trying to talk tough and saying that if there is an attack on North Korea, they plan to include Japan in the area of response and retaliations. And basically, this is an expression of North Korea's frustration over Japan's close coordination with the U.S. in terms of the strengthening of sanctions against North Korea. Now, we're seeing an interesting article. This is over at Investment Watch blog saying that North Korea is a distraction and the real goal is to justify the shifting of more and more weapons, including nuclear weapons, within range of China and Russia, which does seem to make a great deal of sense. We know that the United States really doesn't care one way or the other about North Korea. North Korea is the stepping stone to a war with China, and war with China is on the agenda in order to politically and most importantly economically isolate China from the rest of the world so that gold-backed yuan is no longer a threat to the U.S. dollar as the global reserve trade currency. It's all about the bucks. You people in uniform, this is what you're being asked to risk life and limb for, to prop up the Federal Reserve dollar in the international marketplace. That's it. That's the real agenda. You're not ridding the world of terrorism. You're not out there killing people who hate America for their freedoms. It's all about propping up Ponzi scheme banking. That's it. That's what your life is on the line for. And I know you know it. That's why you're all chowing down on those antidepressants that are driving you wacko at the same time here. Meanwhile, a Chinese Air Force officer has gone public suggesting that this new flu that is running rampant all over China is a product of US government biological warfare. Now it may seem a little bit out there, but it would hardly be the first time the United States was caught out using biological warfare against places like Cuba and other nations in South America. There was a little scam that was going on how uh, America's banks would loan a whole bunch of money to these South American nations. And then the CIA would go in and engage in industrial sabotage and crop poisonings so those nations couldn't pay back the money in a timely manner. And from that point on, those nations were under the control of the United States. Do what we say or we'll call in the loans and repossess everything. And we know that a lot of these recent flus are clearly splices between multiple sources. Pig flu, human flu, bird flu, all mixed together in a giant blender over there at Fort Detrick. So everybody's waiting to see if North Korea is going to drop a bomb on the United States. And because we're all looking over at North Korea, we didn't realize it earlier today, when Barack Obama dropped a major bomb on the United States in terms of his new budget 
that he was required by law to deliver to Congress today, and a lot of people are already saying it's a non-starter. It doesn't really address the problems. It's little more than Obama making another policy statement. And uh, again, as expected, it's going to replace the sequestration with targeted cuts, which are targeted on social spending. Major cuts to Medicare, major cuts to Social Security, which is what the Republicans wanted, and Obama, a Democratic president, is handing it to them. And I want to hit a point here that I've mentioned before. That money in the Social Security Trust Fund is not government money. It is your money, deducted from every paycheck you ever received, which the government was supposed to manage, invest, and give back to you on your retirement. It's your money. It's not their money. But the U.S. government has been borrowing the cash from Social Security, most heavily during the Clinton administration, and now they can't pay it back. Now, the government may call it austerity, but this is in reality a default by the U.S. government against the American worker. It is, by any reasonable definition of the word, theft, stealing, robbery. You're being mugged by Uncle Sam. And the fact that it is the government doing the stealing does not make it any less a crime against the people. So Obama is out there cutting the uh, social spending. Uh, he is uh, basically claims he's going to raise additional revenues by closing tax loopholes for the rich. I can't wait to see him try and get that one through Congress, and that's one of the reasons observers are saying this is never going to fly. It's never going to fly. All right, we got a caller on the line, Alex in Vancouver. Aloha, Alex. Welcome to the show. What's on your mind? Hello, Mike. Um, I've got a question, and something's bothering me, and uh, I just want to like you to put some light on it, please. Um, all these nations that have been invaded by the United States and other countries to force them back onto the petrodollar, for instance, Gaddafi, Libya, Saddam Hussein, Iraq, mm -hmm. Ahmadinejad, Iran, um, the guy down in Mali, uh, Tunmani Touré, um, why do you think in today's modern days of uh, social media do we not hear these leaders going on air and saying, you know, the U.S. is invading us just because of the petrodollar. They're stopping us wanting to deal in the euro or they're stopping us wanting to trade in gold. Um, why do you think we never hear them standing up and speaking out about why they're being invaded? Well, we do. Maybe not from the leaders themselves who have other things to do, like dodging cruise missiles and drones, uh, but certainly people within those nations and within those governments are out there on the social media. Uh, and uh, America, of course, tries to drown it all out with their online propagandists. We know that the U.S. government has invested millions of your tax dollars in special software that can create thousands and thousands of fake Twitter identities, fake Facebook identities, and they'll have an operative who will type something into a keyboard, and it immediately shows up in the social media, appearing to come from a thousand separate independent people. In fact, I was watching the Twitter feed last night regarding North Korea, and you know a lot of people coming in saying it, it's just overblown, it's another Saddam's nukes and so forth, and interspersed with it was this constant flood of you know North Korea is targeting Hawaii, North Korea is going to do this, North Korea is going, and the disparity between. Uh, these two points of view is so obvious that you realize there's no continuum. There's the real public who's tired of war and tired of being lied to to start wars, and there are the hired online propagandists. Most world leaders do not actually get on the social media. They hire somebody to do it. Barack Obama does it. Barack Obama has his own Twitter account, but he himself does not type into it. It's been turned over to a private company that posts tweets supporting White House policy onto Barack Obama's Twitter account. He himself is not out there with his little smartphone tapping messages in in between his golf strokes. And yeah. uh, so there's a great deal of, of noise out there. There's a great deal of jamming that is going on as they try and take control of the public perception. The good news is they're losing. Uh, the uh, uh, based on the reaction of the U.S. government in this run-up to war with North Korea, uh, it is clear to me that the internal polling is coming back completely opposed to yet another war in yet another nation on the other side of the world that doesn't really seem to be a threat to us. So, I, yeah, yeah I, that's my answer to that situation. People are putting the truth out there. Uh, the government is trying to shout them down, but it is getting out there. 
I, I just have a very strong image in my mind of Saddam Hussein being in the um, prosecuting box.